So the next type of problem that I want to explain how to do is the torque caused by a force on an angle on a beam. Um, and so the first thing um, that I want to do is go ahead and read the problem. So a uniform 325 Newton beam, that is 3.35 meters in length, sticks out from a vertical wall. A lightweight cable connects the end of the beam to the wall, making an angle of 60 degrees between the beam and the cable. A 625 Newton worker stands on the beam a distance of 1.1 meters from the wall. And I want to calculate what is the tension in the cable and what is the force exerted on the beam by the wall. Um, so the first thing that I want you to notice is that the beam itself has weight um, and remembering that we just talked about center of mass. Um, what you're going to want to do is to assume all the mass for the beam is at the center of mass. Um, and because the beam is uniform, it's the same density throughout, that means that the center of mass of the beam is gonna be in the middle. Um, and so that means that that will be halfway down the 3.35 meters. So I can go ahead and label that. All right, so now I know where the center of mass is. Um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna draw forces on this beam um, and I want to recognize um, all of the different forces that are happening. Um, so over here, um, the wall is going to be pushing to the right um, on this beam because this cable is going to be pulling it to the left. Um, and so the only way to resist that um, and have the beam not accelerate is to have a, the wall pushing back. Um, I'm going to assume that the wall is pushing up. This is not always going to be the case, but for the moment, we're going to assume that it's just going up. Um, if we get a negative number for that, then I know that the wall is actually pushing down on the beam and we will eventually see some of those examples. Um, I have the force from the person pushing down on the beam. Um, I have the weight of the beam itself pushing down. Um, and then over here we have this tension. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky is that this tension is at an angle. Um, and because it is at an angle, I need to break it into its components. So I need to know how much of it is parallel to the beam or going in the x direction, and how much of that force is perpendicular to the beam and that's going in the y direction. And that's important because if you remember, um, torque is force times distance, um, where they have to be perpendicular to each other. So if you'll notice, if I'm going to make um, the wall over here my zero, um, which is most often the case because I don't know either of these forces and I don't care about them right now, um, so that's the best place to make zero because then whatever these forces are times a distance of zero is going to give me zero. So that's why I'm going to make that zero. Um, and so because this is my zero point, um, the force going directly towards that or my FTX is not going to have any distance between it and this point because it's not perpendicular at all, but your FTY is going to be perpendicular. Um, and so I can figure out how much of that force is, is uh, in the Y direction and then go from there. So the next thing I want to do is create a net torque equation. It's just like the net force equations. Um, but now I need to think about which ways are positive and which ways are negative. Um, so again, I'm going to make this purple point on the left my zero. Um, so that means that this green force is going to cause it to rotate clockwise, which is going to be negative. This is also going to force it down this way. So that means that that's also going to be a negative torque. Um, this pink one will be zero. So you can either do plus or minus. And then this FTY is going to cause it to go up, um, which is going to be a counterclockwise rotation, which is positive. So I'm going to write all of that out. Um, and I, I'm not writing them as forces, I'm writing them as torques because that's what I'm looking at. Um, so I like to put these ones on there even though they will go away. Um, so I have the torque from the wa wall in the y direction, the torque from the wall in the x direction, minus because it's going in the clockwise direction, the torque from the person and the torque from the beam. And then I add the torque um, from the tension in the y and the x directions. 
So the only thing I need to do next is that this is really the most complicated part. If you can get this, then you're probably pretty good. Um, and then each of these, for each of those torques, I remember that torque is always force times distance. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in all of that. Um, so all I did for each of these is I put force times distance with the same um, subscripts. Um, so person is P, beam is B. Um, tension is still T. Um, and I also want you to notice that when I'm doing this problem, I'm keeping my colors consistent. So it's easier to see where each of these numbers are coming from. So the forces are the same color um, as the writing in the equations. All right. Um, these three distances are going to be zero because of the reasons that I just talked about. So because we're going from this point, um, the distance between this point in itself is obviously zero. And then because we're going from this point, my FTX is at the same height. Um, and so it's also going to cause a torque of zero because it's going directly to the left um, and the distance is to the right. Um, and so those are parallel to each other. All right, so now I have my simplified equation. Now all I need to do is put in my forces and my distances. Um, so I went ahead and labeled all of the distances on my diagram, so it should be a little bit easier to follow. Um, so 625 newtons was the weight of the person. So instead of giving you guys kilograms, I just went ahead and gave you the weight um, so that that way it was already a force. 1.1 um, newtons or sorry, 1.1 meters is the distance from the wall to the person that was given in the problem. Um, the weight of the beam was 325. Uh, this distance, the 1.625, if you remember, that's halfway from the beginning of the beam to where the middle is. Um, so it gave you the full length of the beam as being 3.35. Um, and so the middle of the beam is going to be at the 1.625. And then the end of the beam is at 3.35. Um, so I have that here. I do not know the force in the y direction. That's one of the things that I'm figuring out. So I go ahead and plug in the numbers, do some math. And I get a tension in the y direction of 362.87. All right, so once I know that tension in the y direction, um, I just need to use SOHCAHTOA to figure out how much the actual tension is at the angle. So if I already know the y direction, that's going to be the same as this side of the triangle um, because it's a rectangle and both sides of this rectangle need to be the same length. Um, and I remember that I'm trying to find the opposite side relative to the 60, so opposite, and then I'm, well, I have opposite, I'm trying to find my hypotenuse. Um, so opposite and hypotenuse will give me sine, so sine of 60 degrees is FTY divided by FT, um, where FT is that hypotenuse. Um, I go ahead and move the FT to the other side, plug in the numbers, um, and solve, and I get a tension of 419 newtons. All right, so that's part of it. Now I have the tension at the angle. So the next part of this is I'm going to do net force equations to figure out the part for the wall. All righty, so to figure out the force from the wall now, um, I'm going to need to do net force equations. So I've already done net torque equations, and now I'm going to do net force equations. And so to do that, I'm going to do the sum of my forces in the x direction and the sum of the forces in the y direction. So I'm going to start with the y. Um, so I'm just going to go through each of these. So we so we have the force of the wall in the y direction going up. Um, we have the force from the person going down. Um, we have the force from the beam going down. And we also have FTY, or the tension from that rope in the y direction going up. And I sure hope that this beam is not going up or down, otherwise it would not be attached to our wall anymore. So then some of our forces needs to be zero. So the next thing I want to do is put in all the numbers 
for what all of those forces are. Okay, so I went and grabbed the sizes of the forces of all of these and went ahead and labeled them on my diagram. And now I'm just substituting them into my equation. And now all I need to do is type this into my calculator and solve. So when I type this in, I get negative 587.13. So I add that to both sides, and I'll get that the force of the wall in the y direction is equal to 587.13. So that's part of my answer. Um, and then I just need to also figure it out for the x-direction. So to do the x-direction, I'll do the sum of my forces in the x-direction. Um, this one's going to be a little bit trickier, though, because I don't know what FTX is yet. All right, so I'm going to have it equal to zero again because this is not accelerating into or out of the wall. And then I'm going to go ahead and redraw my triangle here um, for that tension in the rope. So this is my 60 degree angle. I know that this is 419. I know that this side was 362.87. Um, and then this is my FTX that I need to figure out. Um, so FTX is going to be equal to, well, let's see, I need to do, and actually I'm going to use my y direction because that's what I found first and I'm going to use that to solve for my x. I could also use the hypotenuse um, but in case I made a mistake finding the hypotenuse um, I don't want to then use the wrong answer for ftx so I like to use the one that I knew first. Um, so that's opposite and then this is adjacent so I'll be using tangent. So tangent of 60 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent which is 362.87 divided by my adjacent, which is my FTX. Um, to solve for FTX, I'll multiply both sides by FTX. And then I'll divide both sides by tangent of 60. And then I'll type this into my calculator. And that'll give me 209.5 as my FTX. So once I take this and I plug it in for FTX, I'll be able to solve for the force of the wall. And that'll just give me 209.5. And you're done.